Are you struggling with outside corner joints and you're just not sure how to make them better? You want that stack of dimes look and you just tried everything and you just can't seem to get that result you're looking for? We came to the right place because I have been there and I know exactly what it's like struggling and just trying everything. Let me tell you, just a few little adjustments or tweaks that we're gonna be going over today could make all the difference. So with that being said, let's get into these top three mistakes that I see beginners make. And I have personally made these mistakes myself in the past and I realized how much of a difference these three things make to get you that result that you're looking for. So let's get right into it. Now the number one mistake that I see beginners make, and this is probably, this is the biggest one that makes the most difference on what your weld looks like, is running too hot. So in general, with outside corner joints, you have to run way colder than any other joint that you weld. And if you follow that chart in your welder or recommended settings for that material thickness that you're welding, this will absolutely kill your aesthetic appearance of your weld. And yeah, it'll be a weld that holds your metal together perfectly fine with a lot of penetration, but you're never going to reach that aesthetic appearance that you're looking for. So as you can see here, I'm running way too hot. And you can just tell by the puddle here that every time I step forward and come back to make a dime, I can't get away from that heat because the puddle is just way too hot and I can't step away to make that definition for stacking dimes. So as you can see here, when I'm running a little bit colder, every time I step forward and come back into the puddle, it's not just one giant blob of metal I'm just coming back into. The puddle actually cools down and then heats back up when I'm coming back with my dime. And then as I'm stepping forward, it cools down. When I'm coming back into it, it heats up again. So you want that cooling and heating and cooling and heating to happen to get that definition and that stack of dimes look. If you want to see what manipulation I use and how I do it, you can watch this video right here. So the second mistake I see beginners make is traveling too fast. So when you start traveling too fast, you start running into some issues like low spots and undercut and just overall inconsistency on your bead. So what I tell all my students is this is not a race. You gotta let that puddle fill in that joint properly and just take your time with it. So the third mistake I see beginners make, and this was something when I realized this, this was completely eye-opening to me. And that is your torch angle to the workpiece makes a big difference. So when I was first learning how to MIG weld, I was always told that torch angle is always roughly like 45 degrees into the joint. And what I realized and found out later was that actually if you have your gun pointed up a little bit and favoring that top side of the joint, that actually helps a ton with undercut and filling your joint out properly and giving you that good aesthetic looking bead. As far as your torch angle forward and back, I personally always like a dragging angle with my torch and I just feel like you can see the puddle way better and control it way better. I just feel like the bead just kind of fills out a lot nicer. So you can see right here side by side what these beads will look like. This first bead is ran too hot and then the second bead is turned down a bit, but it's just still ran too quick with the travel speed and a little bit inconsistent. The last one is ran at a good machine setting and good travel speed with good technique. Now my biggest point here is that this takes a lot of patience and practice to get consistent with it. So if you're learning for the first time, I would focus on just getting your travel speed consistent and your motion consistent, and then really start dialing in your settings to get the best results. So as always, if you have any questions on any part of this video, or if there's anything else you want me to go more into detail about, just drop those in the comments below. And with that being said, hope you liked the video and we'll see you in the next one.